Caroline, what does the word leader mean to you? Well, I think the fact that in it's very simple, it just means songs, and that encompasses so much. Mm. And I think we can get very uh, sort of internal looking, that we, we look inwards all the time and, and think of Schubert or a very small portion of song, and actually there's such a, a wide range. Um, it can mean anything, any songs. And I think that's one of the special things about this whole art form. And you spend so much of your life singing art song, not just at Leeds for Leeds Leader, but all over the world. What do you think makes it so special for you? Um, for me, it's, it's uh, a chance to become somebody else every two or three minutes. <laughs> and you know, I really like that. It's, um, they're all like mini operas in some ways. You, you take on a role, um, you might have a cycle of songs and, and you'll go through a narrative but you haven't got the costumes, you haven't got props, you haven't got um, you know, a chorus behind you going, yes, and then we did this. It's, it's very intimate, it's very small, and I, I like that we get to um, put ourselves in other people's shoes and it forces you to empathise. And, and I think for the audience, if they'll come with you on that journey, that's a really special thing. But it must be quite exhausting as well to be changing these characters every three minutes. You almost get sort of emotional whiplash, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and I think that's something that you think about a lot as well when you're programming uh, a recital. Um, because you can choose, we can manipulate in a way people's emotions a little bit by choosing to take a group of songs that lead you quite smoothly through mm. a narrative. But then you also have the option of doing a big clunk and a change, complete mm -hmm. change of character, which it's a bit like having an iPod on shuffle. It, it, you, hear it, you hear things differently, sometimes out of context. And you talk about sort of listening with an iPod, and I guess we're all living in this very busy world now where we think we're too busy to do anything. So why should people actually come to a concert instead of just listening on their iPod? Um, because it's a shared experience. Mm. You, um, it can still be... It's still your personal experience, but you're there with a room full of people that are experiencing something together. And I think it's really, really important to say um, to people that perhaps don't know how to respond or feel they don't know how to be in a concert. And the fact is there isn't a right or a wrong way to listen. Mm. There isn't a, a right or wrong way to experience the music. It can touch you however you like and if you've walked in after a terrible day feeling very tired sad about something and you can come along and you can be uplifted by something or it can in a way let you indulge those feelings mm -hmm. and everyone I think you can take away so much from it but you're still there's a, a community which I think is really important to all of us. Mm -hmm. You're, I mean, you're known sort of worldwide as being a, a fantastic singer of Purcell. And one of the things that I always love about his music is the way that he actually treats words. What sets him apart from other composers in that respect? You have the feeling that he loves the English language. Mm. And something like, uh, if music be the food of love, that's the first line of the poem, but he doesn't set that. He says, if music, if music be the food of love, and he's already putting you in a different place. And the version we're doing is, uh, is realised by Britain. And that means it's a slightly different piano part. It's, it's quite exciting, actually. Yeah, well, Purcell didn't write a piano part. He mm. wrote a bass line and put some numbers in that gave the keyboard player an idea of what harmony to, to play. And they would make up the rest. Mm. Britain has made up his version and written it down, which is a great thing because that means that people that don't feel comfortable with the improvisation or perhaps the style of Baroque music have, have a starting point. And, um, and he, but he does all the things that you could do in those days. It's a very stylish realization, but still 20th century. And what do you think drew Britain to Purcell in the first place? Uh, I imagine, again, this love of words because Britain was also an amazing text setter mm. and 
Yeah, I think they're both very forward-thinking composers, and I'm sure Britain recognised that in Purcell. If music be the food of love, sing on till I am filled with joy. For then my listening soul you move to pleasures that can never cloy. Your eyes, your mien, your tongue declare that you are music everywhere. Pleasures invade both eye and ear, so fierce the transports are, they wound. And all my senses feasted are, though yet the feast is only sound. Sure I must perish by your charms, unless you save me in your arms. Thank you. 